Hi everyone and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where today we're here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach for something really special today. It's a special day because it's Sean's birthday! Hey, 30 today, I can't I believe it. Oh. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing something quite special. We're going to be doing one of the experiences that Pleasure Beach do and we're going to be walking the Big Dipper. Oh, walk the Woody. I've wanted to do this since it launched and I'm really excited. So thanks Charlotte oh, for a nice really birthday gift. Of course the Big Dipper is currently closed for an overhaul. It's 100 years old I this year. I can't believe it's 100 years old. The ride opened back in 1923 and it's set to open later this season after a bit of a glow up as the park are calling it. And we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to do the Walk the Woody experience and get up close to the repainted ride. They're almost finished with the repainting and it looks fantastic, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it looks really nice. When it's all finished, it's gonna look great. Of course, with all the white supports and then the red running rails, it looks brilliant, it really does. So I'm very excited to get up close and personal with this ride also later in the year we're going to be doing walk the big one xl which is oh, going to be great i'm really looking forward to that you've never done walk no, the big I've one i've never done it before and fun fact for you i've done walk the big one back when it started i was the first group that ever did it and so uh, yeah i've not done it since then so i'm really excited and we're doing the xl version which includes other parts as well um instead of just going up to the top of the main lift hill and down and some other photo opportunities which would be great so stay tuned for that um but yeah it's time for walk the woody in terms of you book this experience you need to meet um at the set time round at the side of the hotels don't you for this yeah, one yeah it gives you all the information when you do book it and you have to wear like sensible shoes like no trainers make sure you've got proper good shoes on. yeah so we've got some nice big boots we're gonna go and meet them now and uh, yeah we'll get all mounted up We've got to get all our gear oh, on for I'm this so one. Excited. We've got to wear our hard hat as we well on this indeed. one for safety. And of course, we're going to be able to film the experience as well. So come and join us as we walk on the iconic Big Dipper here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, 100 years old. Let's go. And the weather is absolutely perfect for this tonight. And we are really looking forward to it. Never done this before. So yeah, it's going to be fantastic. And we can't wait to take you all along for it. Yeah, in terms of the entrance to the experience, it's just in between the Big Blue Hotel, which is here on the right, and the Boulevard, which is the lovely building there on the left. And yeah, there's a gate that leads into the park. And that's where you meet at the set time. So we're inside the park then now. And yeah, just reading through the terms and conditions just here and the safety restrictions as well for the experience. Walk the Woody 100, which we are doing here tonight. But yeah, you can just see all of the list down there. Feel free to pause the video if you want to see any of those. But yeah, you can see the restrictions and safety aspects to it all on there as well. So my name's Andy, um, and we've got a team of people here this evening. We're gonna take you on Walk the Woody uh, 100, um, which um, is slightly different experience to how it was previously. Um, which you'll get to see hopefully a bit more of the, the ride. You've got the absolute perfect oh. evening um, for this as well. We've just done it for a previous group. Um, you, we don't want rain, we haven't got rain, we've got sunshine, so it should be, should be good stuff. Okay, so um, it's a really special year um, for the Big Dipper because it is its 100th birthday. Someone else is special birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 13. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh. Oh, oh, no, thank you. you oh, that's really kind of you. Oh, look at that. Oh, that my God. Oh, that looks delicious. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's really kind of you. Oh, cheers. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Oh, from, from us. Thank you. Um, but the big dip is actually 100, so um, um, it's a big year for it. And this is kind of an embarrassing photo. It's me stood under the <laughs> onion. It is an onion. Um, there is a debate about whether this is an onion or a droplet, depending on where you view. If you work here, you have to choose one of those teams, but it's definitely an onion. But it's being um, repainted at the moment. In fact, you will get to see it from a distance um, a little bit later um, on this tour. The ride isn't open at the moment, um, and that's deliberate because we are currently refurbishing it um, entirely. And how we're doing that is people on ropes, um, in the most part, who are high pressure jet washing the ride that removes some of the older wood or any rotten wood and so on. And um, that's a process you would do on a lesser scale for your normal winter maintenance, but we're doing it on a major scale across the whole ride because we're repainting the whole ride um, for its birthday, ready for, the ride should reopen in June. Um, and then it's having its official kind of birthday party on the 23rd um, of August. Um, and there's an invite thing online if you were interested in coming to that, we're having a big party for it. So it's a big, big, big year um, for this ride. 
Um, the ride itself looks different to how it was um, originally. It opened in 1923, but it was um, actually a completely different layout in that it was much, much more of an L-shaped ride then. And the reason for that um, is because the part of the park that you're stood in now um, wasn't owned by the park then. Um, and Pleasure Beach basically expanded across down into, this is South Park and it's the last part of the park um, to actually get developed. And um, as we bought more land and expanded down here and started to put rides down here, rides like um, the PB Express, one of the first rides to come down here. They re-looked about 10 years into the life of the Big Dipper. They re-looked at its layout um, and thought they could make it more interesting and so on. Um, and so made significant changes in the early 30s um, to the ride. So that it now kind of resembles the layout that you would see today, which is more of what you would call a typical out and back wooden roller coaster. And um, the stats wise aren't particularly anything to shout about, particularly by these days standards, but you've got to remember that 100 years ago, this was actually a really big deal. What I would say about that is the fact that people 100 years later still want to come and ride it and find it a really exciting ride means that it's a good ride. Um, I hope people still want to ride Icon mm. in like another 90 years or whatever. Um, one of the reasons it's still a really exciting ride is because it was one of the first coasters in Europe to have upstop wheels. Um, and what that means is um, that, that when you watch horror films with coasters coming flying off the tracks and so mm -hmm. on, that's so unlikely because the coaster train is effectively clamped onto the track. You've got the wheels running on the running um, tracks on the top, but wheels on the inside, and then you've got upstop wheels on the underneath. And that allows you to have much tighter, steeper turns and drops like the airplane turns that we've got on this ride, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the factors into, that makes it such a still an exciting ride today, even if it's you know, relatively short compared to the, um, the big one and the speeds, you know, 40 miles an hour and so on. Um, we have four wooden coasters here. Three of those are still manually operated. That means somebody has to pull a lever at the right time in order to stop the train when it comes in. Um, what's special um, about the Big Dipper is it's the only one of those where we run two trains still um, on it, um, and we're still reliant on a brake person. They're in a brake box, so um, it's more commonplace in Europe to see someone riding on the train um, with a brake handle, um, mm -hmm. a brake lever to bring the train to a, a, a stop. It's effectively the same thing, but they're in a box at the end of the ride, and you'll get to see that um, box close up a little bit later on. But we are reliant on someone doing something at the right time every single time. They're helped a little bit by the block section that we've got on there, which I'll tell you about in a, in a second. Um, all of the um, wooden coasters, unlike the steel coasters, are walked in their entirety every single morning. It doesn't matter what the weather is before the park opens. If you um, get the Grand National, which is kind of the short straw, <laughs> then it's paired with the Blue Flyer. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're doing the Dipper, then you'll do it with the Nickelodeon Streak mm -hmm. um, as well. I promise you at the end of this, you'll have a new appreciation for the people that actually do that. Some of those are in this room, but we won't let their egos get too big. <laughs> um, but you, you start to realize that it drops what you think are small when you're on the ride, when you've actually got to walk them. It's actually a bit of a different deal and they have to do it whatever the weather. So even if it's chucking down with rain um, and so on. What they're looking for is um, inconsistencies in the track, um, damage to the running rails, um, any nails that are sticking out where they shouldn't be, um, any rot um, in the wrong place that needs replacing, things like that, um, before, to obviously make sure that the ride is, is, is safe to open to the general public. And you're going to walk a little bit in their footsteps um, today. There's this funny little drawing here, which gives you a Ignore the markings on it, it's part to do with our risk assessment where we've stolen it from. But it shows you quite clearly um, how it's an out and back style um, coaster. Um, and some of the sort of points on there that you would notice is that's where the onion would normally be situated, the brake box is um, there. Um, and then you've got these two aeroplane turns, the twisted drops. Um, during the ride, and it goes right down to where Icon is, um, where the S bend is, and then comes back um, down that out and back um, motion. Um, in terms of stats for length, it's what we would call a medium kind of uh, length of track, certainly compared to a ride um, like Icon or the big one um, at 3,300 feet. Some of our other rides are like 5,000 feet, so it gives you, gives you an idea. Um, and then that block section thing that I was talking about before, the block was actually retrofitted onto the ride later on 
um, in its life. Um, if you've ever seen it when, um, particularly if you're like on the new bridge outside Icon, but if you see one of the trains stop on the lift for a few seconds and then restart, mm -hmm. that's because we're running a two train service and the other train will still be in the unload section mm -hmm. and not clear yet. And the block is waiting for that to be clear before it lets the train go over the top. Once the train has gone off the top of the lift, it's free rolling, we can't stop it again until it gets back to the brake section with that, that brake person, mm -hmm. okay? And you'll see a little bit of the, the, the bits behind that block um, uh, system when we're having a walk around um, in a little bit. Okay. Um, so the walk itself, as said, we're going to follow in our uh, footsteps of our engineering team. We're going to do lots of stops. The stops are the ideal time to take photos, and that's what you're here for, hopefully. You can take as many photos as you'd like when we're doing that. If you're filming, which you'll see, uh, that's the right piece of kit, <laughs> um, so you can just press record and then off you go. Yeah. Um, when you're walking, we need you to be concentrating on the walk in part um, itself and where you're putting your, your feet um, and so on. Okay. Um, and that's all good. Uh, so, it's not for everybody. Um, you might decide halfway around that you don't like it, and it might be too tall for you, or you or because there is some height involved and so on. The main thing in those situations, that if you don't like it, and it's quite challenging in points as well, is that you tell us, okay? You, what you'll find is there's four of you walking, there'll be one of us at the front, one of us in the middle, and one of us at the rear of the group. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, you just tell us. We usually say we're going to sit down, but actually it depends where we are on the ride, whether we actually do that or not. But we have a Rescue at Heights person here this evening as well, and we'll basically work out what's going to be the easiest and quickest way to get you down in a safe way if you don't like it. All right? It doesn't happen very often with us. It's more to do with the big one um, when we're higher up and it's windy. But, um, but you know, you've, you've not walked this coast before, I assume, and therefore you don't know until you've done it whether you like it or not. Are you all ready there then, Charlotte? Yeah, I'm all kitted up. Hey, ready to got go. the pet soldiers on there, all your safety yeah. protection. Gear. And yeah, some nice history about the ride there yeah, as well, which was great. Really nice talk, yeah. all information. About 15 minutes information and safety nice. instructions. It took about five minutes just to get kitted up. Not too long. Like Charlotte is just here too. Here we go. A little behind the scenes look here at Icon, the lower section there, and of course the S bend around the other side. So you're going to get used to me, And steeplechase. Even though you've got a helmet on, though, really good to watch your head now. Um, and the first um, version of that is here. Okay. So and watch our heads. Oh, look at this. Right, so the first thing that we're going to do, guys, is go into the ride footprint and we're going to cross over the track and then we're going to connect to the safety line. The top sort of tip for that is to actually have this out of this when you're connecting and disconnecting because it's a lot easier. If you try and do it when this the carabiner is through, you'll find problems, okay? And to connect it, you'll see that there's two little... See those? Mm -hmm. The trick is to only connect one at a time. So you do half of it at a time, get that half connected on, and then do the other half. Don't be trying to do them together because it won't go on. Once it's on, get your carabiner. There is a knack to this, but you push it up and twist it to open it, and then you put it through. There we go, Charlotte. Oh, Crossing yeah. over the track. Mm. <laughs> oh, look at this. The trips do one side <laughs> This is the fun bit now. Connected on. on. That's it, we're all connected on. Of course, this is going to stop us from falling here. This just slides along the rail here. All good. This? Getting your exercise in here, Charlotte. Yeah, as Andy said at the start, they have to walk these every single day to check. And yeah, it's pretty steep, you don't realise, do you? Bit of wood replacement there. Oh, someone's waving from the hotel. <laughs> oh, what a gorgeous evening for this. <laughs> walk in the woody. Oh, <laughs> careful, Charlotte. <laughs> hey, on the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> wow look at this the weather is so good for this tonight as well see out on the turnaround section of the out and back layout <laughs> it's the fun bit isn't it just trying to get them over keep them vertical if 
find it easier if you kind of go over them with speed a little bit easier than going slow over them just keep the momentum going what a great view of the helix there on the big one as well here from the big dipper wow look at this <laughs> You think this is scary? Wait till we do the big one, Charlotte. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well done, guys. You seem to be uh, coping all right. You get a good view here of um, the S Bend um, on ICOP. Um, we've got some little platforms there, which we've never had to use. Um, but those are actually there in November if it didn't make the course. I it didn't get through the inline to the second launch. That's it. Will come back down to here. That's where we can take people off if we need to. Um, you can also see that the, um, the we are making use of it's quite unusual for the big dipper to be shut for such a long period of time um, for repainting as it is but we're making use of that time by doing a lot of retracking on the um, wooden coasters people tend to judge coasters a lot by today's standards and obviously these rides are this rides are 100 years old and what we're always trying to eliminate particularly on the national and this one is particularly on a flat curve like this and um, that side to side juddering motion that you get when you're going through the ride we're trying to eliminate that and we do that by retracking all of this retracking work is done in house okay so we have a team of structures people of specialists in the ride that work on it um, and you can see and you'll see as we go further on they've actually been quite busy um, over the, the winter period all right okay so we're gonna go a little bit further really good to see and yeah like andy said it's all these kind of sections here yeah lots of retracking work let's carry on walking around you can see like all the sides that's actually the area that we're walking on now that's been changed here as well with new strips of wood huge project looking after these woodies Something are so special about walking around this ride, especially at night when there's no one else in the park. Awesome view of Icon there too. I mean, look at that, seeing the trap from this angle. Obviously, when you're on Big Dipper and you're going around here quite fast, you don't really get to appreciate that curve just there, the S bend on Icon. You smell all the fresh new wood on here as well. <laughs> You realise how close you get here to steeplechase. I mean, that's something that's... Oh, hey, thank you. <laughs> that's always something what's made Pleasure Beach really special. It is all the rides kind of intertwining with each other and interactions. Look at this. There's Icon. Yeah, literally the clearance is like a few metres here between steeplechase and Big Dipper. see a lot of little numbers um, on stanchions like the one over there the 135 there and and that's so that when they carry out work they can say like i was at that point on the ride that's where i did that repair or replacement and so on and then that's obviously logged um, but it's just a way of locating you can, obviously the size of it is a complex structure there's lots of um you know there's lots of places that you could be doing work that means you're able to actually map that out um, on the icon below you can see there, lots of people are surprised when we come out here because there's these murals um, which a lot of people don't ever see when they're on the ride because you're going so fast. A little known fact is for the first week of operation they were actually mirrors, mm. not uh, murals. Yeah, I remember that, yeah, just, just down here. They've got the cherry blossom on there now. Carry on walking, okay. enjoying it Charlotte. Have oh, you never noticed them? <laughs> though? The finer details. I love seeing an icon from this angle. That's another great reason for doing walk the woody here like just getting to get up close to icon um, so you get your first little test here because you do have to disconnect and oh. then you've got a little step down oh here we you go reconnect so obviously when you're not connected for that, that that foot you need to take extra care we're just going to walk down this little dip as well in a second and you'll discover why you should never wear a baseball cap on a ride <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at the red paint just here, it looks fantastic. Um, and then obviously the turtle chase um, got removed and 
it used to be located where the token poles are on ICOM um, now, um, and they got resprayed and then they come over here. Not quite sure what they've got to do with ICOM, but um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Brian, the old turtle chase, like Andy just said, just down here, love it. This is actually one of my favourite parts of the ride experience on Big Dipper, coming down this hill here and just seeing the track for steeplechase in front of you, creating a really good kind of head chopper moment. But yeah, it's really nice to see all this red paint. You right there? <laughs> that's, a, that's the thing, sometimes it's better going over them with speed, isn't it? Keeping the momentum going. Yeah, all this repainting looks awesome. sun starts to go down here in Blackpool yeah you can see all the repainted support sections down there too looking really good and yeah like Andy said should be finished in opening June so when we come back from the America trip should be back on the Big Dipper <laughs> look at all these interactions with the rise just here it really makes it and that's a big part of why I love Icon as well it's his then interactions with the other rides that really makes it. Oh, look at this, so close to Steeplechase. And it's amazing how they managed to build Icon through here, isn't it? Five years ago, I can't believe it, 2018, when Icon opened here at Pleasure Beach. How are you finding it, Charlotte? Oh, it's just so <laughs> you getting on all right there? It was the perfect weather for it. Stopped, stopped here not just because it's a good photo. Wow. To take photos, but also, um, it, for me, this is like classic Pleasure Beach because you've got like five rides all interacting with each other, um, and that's what kind of makes makes here special. Right? That is gorgeous. I make, no, normally make positive comments about the steeplechase and its uniqueness now um, at this point as well, but because sometimes we get people on here saying oh it takes up an awful lot of space and it could be classic you know, but, but then luke <laughs> you're a fan of the steeplechase <laughs> oh <laughs> possibly not oh classic uh, classic oh, yeah <laughs> but it also presents you know one of modern theme park problems is when people take um, phones on rides and drop them <laughs> and you know to if you can imagine during normal operation to retrieve items here we'd have to shut down five rides yeah. in order yeah. to do that um, and so, you know, having rides on top of rides makes for a great atmosphere, but it does cause problems uh, as well. You can also see uh, one of the new pieces, the big one track, nicely oh, yeah. lit up by the sun behind us. Mm -hmm. That was the bit we did the year before. Oh, look at that. Um, Amazing. You can always tell the new track against the old track. If you look at the old track over there in the helix, you can see the, um, the sort of cow horn support is a lot further apart on the old track than they are on the new track. Mm -hmm. We've done that deliberately um, to basically for longevity for the ride. We want the big ones to last at least another 25 years. Um, so that's that's why you'll spot you can spot them quite a lot of new track um, as we go round. It's an ongoing program. Um, we can't do it in one year in the way that Orton's doing with um, Nemesis. It's obviously a shorter coaster, um, so we've chosen to do it gradually over a long period. But we are intending to replace all the track. Oh, that's really mm, there you go. Really good to hear. All right, so we're going to go a little bit further on. You'll find there's an awkward bit when we dip down towards the head chopper moment, um, where you do need to disconnect and go a short distance. So just take extra care on, on that bit, okay? Okay. Look at that view of Icon from here as well. Never really seen it from this angle. When you're on the ride on Big Dipper itself, you wouldn't really look over that way because you're going at speed. But I certainly will make sure I do now when it's back open from June. So that's a great view. <laughs> yeah, it's a big job. Some more repainted sections here as well. It's look fantastic. It's so nice to see them kind of restoring that old colour scheme with the red and the white. I'm looking forward to seeing the onion back on the top as well. Of course, we're going to be heading up that way later on. 
in the walk, which is really exciting. I like how you start down here on the lower sections, kind of gets you used to it as well before heading higher. So yeah, just to put it into perspective where we are, this is the back of Burger King just here now. That's a brilliant view, look at that. Another brilliant part of the ride just here. Another brilliant near miss element, head chopper. As you come down here under the walkway, you're right there, Charlotte. It is steep, like it is really steep. That's the thing you don't realize when you're coming down here how, how steep this drop is. Some wolves over there, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing when you're walking something, you see so many things what you wouldn't necessarily um, notice on the ride. And yeah, like Andy said at the start, they're kind of abseiling from it when they're doing the repaint. And yeah, I'd imagine that's what a lot of these ropes and things are that we can see here on the left. Some of that equipment that they're using for the repaint of the Big Dipper. And lots of flaky paint here on the right. Not done this bit yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're disconnected here, are we? Oh, look at this. Yeah, we're just unclipped now at the top. And down here oh, nice. in the tunnel. Oh, look at this. All, all made it down. Wow. Well done. Um, okay, so a couple of things. One, um, they've got to remember the train would normally be heading in this direction. Where it's coming through here. This is a real, a real head chopper moment on the ride, which is a real high point um, of the ride. And um, you can kind of imagine, actually, if you think, um, if it, like if I was sat in a, a train here, with arms in the air, although I should be riding normally, obviously holding on. <laughs> um, then you can you can see the clearance. It is a real sort of head chopper moment, um, and there is a bit of an illusion as well. So as you come down, um, the drop it is looking like it's 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 closer than it actually is. But the thing that no one ever notices is also you've got some more authentic Pleasure Beach sand um, below us here. Oh yeah, look at Pleasure that. Beach was built on the beach originally. How cool um, is that? Bits of places around the park where you can actually still find more authentic Pleasure Beach sand. Under the flying machines is one of them. Around, it's difficult to see through that window, but if you actually can see in and around the foundations, you can see the sand there. It's a little bit over by Infusion, which you'll see again actually in a, in a moment. <coughs> um, and then the other one that no one knows about is underneath the Nickelodeon uh, Street Station, where the transfer track used to be when we ran two trains. All of that is sand as well. So we really are, you know, built. Onto the onto the beach. Uh, <coughs> um, we're painting the ride, as you've seen, and you'll see a lot more um, as we go um, further on. We're using people um, on ropes to paint, and we're choosing to do that over scaffolding um, because we want to keep the surrounding rides open. Yeah. Um, and so, for example, if we scaffolded everything down near Infusion, it could infringe on Infusion's running, and we, we obviously try and limit the number of rides that are closed at any one time. So it's that's a what the why, the reason why we're taking that, that approach to painting it. Um, in a moment we're gonna go up this side um, we're gonna do an awkward crossover but it's worth it because then you get to go up on the up star hill and get the really good view. No one looks great doing it. I'll go, <laughs> I'll go first. Um, all good right. fun. So um, so you can see me do it first and then we need you guys to do it as well. But if you can get through that it's worth it. Okay, so if you want there to cross go. over to where I am. Try crossing the track. You don't realise how big this tunnel is, do you Charlotte? Like when you're on it, how, how long the tunnel actually yeah. is. And how close it is too. One of the highlights of the ride. See that repaint carrying on down here. And what a fun fact about the beach down there. Never noticed that before. No, I mean if you're on the front row maybe, but now we know about it, it's something to look out for, isn't it? Climbing through this section. This is great, it's so steep. Now there's not loads of room on the walkways if you're coming to do this. Off you go Charlotte, look at this. Climbing coasters, brilliant. It's not just walk the woody, it's climb the woody. <laughs> Did not look very glamorous doing that. <laughs> Here we are then. Climbing up the very steep Star Hill. Yeah, I imagine it's called that because of the Star Pub that used to be on the right. I mean, the Boulevard Hotel is there now. Well, this is stunning coming up here. I did not know we were coming up this bit. That is really cool. I love this whole section because it's not really that heavily supported in the middle. Wow, look at this. 
What a view. That is incredible. Look at that. And the sun as well, peeking through the big one support structure. Amazing. Wow. It was worth that awkward position climbing over. <laughs> Yeah, if anyone doesn't know lots about the layout of the ride, obviously we come up in this direction and pass over here before heading to the sections that we walk around just. And a great view looking back of Icon. It's just here as well. And Sky Force there too. It's called Star Hill because before the there was a There you go. Over, so for a lot of people it would have been the first ride that wow. they saw as they came in. What's really nice about it is like 60 years later when they put the big one in, they decided to replicate Star Hill into oh, the big one. Amazing, structure. look at that. I like Icon a lot, I'm a big fan of it, but I have two moans about it. Oh, they didn't do a third Star <laughs> Hill on Icon, and then they put a statue right in the middle of the steeple chase. <laughs> <laughs> Mac rides, everybody. <laughs> Anti-rollback, is it? It is, yeah. Um, it's called a dog latch. Oh, okay. But it does the same function as an anti-rollback. In fact, when you go on the lift later, you'll see how it's identical. Why would you want one here? Just in case the wind was coming in and, uh, you know, it would push it back down kind of thing. So if you were running the coaster at the start of the season or in the morning when it was slow and cold, if, you, if the train didn't make the circuit, do you want to get it out from the bottom of a dip where you're going to have to get a yeah. Or from the top of a hill where you could get six burly engineers to come and push it and it will probably make it. <laughs> so this is why you'll find at the top of a lot of the drops here, um, we've got a dog rat to catch um, the train because it's a lot easier to get it back from there than it is at the bottom. You can also see what I'm saying about... Yeah, Stunning. What an evening for this though. That is amazing. There you go, some more really interesting facts there from Andy. And being an enthusiast himself, knows a lot about the park and the rides here, which is great. Yeah, this is awesome walking here over Star Hill and some more great facts there as well, of course, with the same design in 1994 when the big one opened. And these views are amazing, like look at this. You get to see so much of the layout, which is incredible. That's where we walked down earlier through the tunnel. This is the fun bit, just getting them over. <laughs> By the end of it, Charlotte, we'll be experts. Oh, no, no. When we do uh, walk the big one XL in July, we'll be experts. You need to be with that one. Oh, look at this. Amazing. Yeah, obviously these sections haven't been painted yet. When you see it up close, you realize how big of a job this is. Like you think about painting a wall or a fence at home in your garden and think about painting a full wooden coaster. It's a big job. <laughs> this is spectacular. <laughs> yeah, there we go, they're in the window. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Love it. Wow, what a special view. Again, it really makes you appreciate the design of all the rides here and how they fit so much in. And there's already quite a lot in this part of the park, really, with Big Dipper, Pleasure Beach Express, Steeple Chase, and then 2018, they added Icon into the mix as well. Now, they could have easily not sent it down this section, but they did, and I'm glad they did because the s bend is one of the best parts on Icon. Them close interactions, and talking of that, look at this, how close we are to the big one. Some of that new track. It was done on the big one. And yeah, interesting how Andy says it's all going to be getting done over the period of time, which is great to see, looking after the classic. It's steep here, isn't it, Charlotte? <laughs> wow. You definitely want to be holding on when you're doing this. Yeah, it's really quite steep. You don't realise, do you, when you're riding it? But yeah, and that's the thing, someone has to do this every single morning. It's 
keep these wooden coasters safe, which is amazing. Here we are, back down to this section. Um, we're in the dinosaur section. If you look behind you, you can see where it says on safari going through, and that's because it used to be the other way. Has anyone got uh, any idea why we, we would reverse the train every few years? Oh, just to even out the way on the way. It is exactly that. So that's the reason um, for it. They also added a crisscross, which is the bit outside the station um, where the little um, sort of fake levelling box is. Um, and that allowed greater flexibility with the route that the trains could take around as well. So we're going to take a walk down here. You'll get a good view of um, Star Hill that you've obviously just been over. Mm. Okay. What's your awesome. Some facts there about Pleasure Beach Express. Another one of my favourites at the park. I mean, I've got a lot of favourites at this park, but... <laughs> enjoying it so far, Charlotte? Yeah, really. Yeah, there's Star Hill. Well, we walk just away from down here. It doesn't look that tall, does it? But when you're up there, pretty high. You wait for the big one. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's been like 10 years since I did it, but pretty terrifying. I'm not even scared of heights, but it was pretty terrifying. Yeah, looking forward to that. It'll be coming up this summer here on the channel. Making our way now down to the next area that we're walking on the Big Dipper. Here's the other station. Yeah, nice so you get a bit of a look from the ride down here we're as not well. At we're not stopping at Burger King, not tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say the, the track looks amazing with the paint on from here now. Look at that. You can see obviously the painting has progressed a lot more um, in this area than the further down bit that we've um, down before. That's uh, plane turn one. You'll be pleased to know that we're not going to walk. Yeah. Down that. When we did the practice for this, we walked the entire length of the track and then we kind of figured actually it's probably a step too far. Yeah, very steep. <laughs> so, yeah. Great view. Oh, here's an awesome view. Look at that. Wow, and this weather tonight is just perfect for it as well. Carrying on down the Pleasure Beach Express track. Look at the lights just here as well. Yeah, these big floodlights obviously shine up onto the big one. I mean, you don't realise until you get close to these how big they are. And they're all on the floor and kind of on the roofs of the buildings and that sort of thing. Because that's the thing, Pleasure Beach looks amazing at night. It's quite weird walking around this way. And <laughs> you remember riding it as a kid when it used to go around this way. Close up look at some more of the track pieces here and supports for the Big Dipper. Yeah, so they've painted them on the ground before, of course, putting them into place. Yeah, the repaint looks really good. It's great to see it from here. Lots of replacements, like, look at this. Like, digging the kind of holes for it all down there, all the foundations. Some great views of infusion around here as well. My personal favorite ride. <laughs> Even just to walk around here is an experience in itself, isn't it? Just coming to see all this. Look at that sky tonight as well. What a special birthday. Thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> so the trains, the trains, when we do the train maintenance, if you think in the station how difficult it would be to get a crane in there to actually take the train out, bear in mind a coaster train weighs about seven tonnes. Um, it can bring it in sections to here and be pulled across and put onto a bogey on the, um, um, the PV Express and taken to a much more suitable location like outside the PV Express station in order to get the trains off and take them back to maintenance shed um, for winter works to be carried out. So that seemingly um, sort of grey structure is actually really, really useful mm -hmm. to us. So they're actually put onto the trains and taken. I never knew that. No. I never knew the PV Express was used like that. That's there you go. Cool, the PV Express helps us in another way, which you'll see in a moment. That's really fascinating. All the years been coming here, I did not know that. That's that's brilliant. And there's the classic Big Dipper sign on the side there too, which looks pretty fresh. I don't think they've done any painted on that, but it looks really nice anyway, to be honest. With that one. I love that snake. <laughs> 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 I 
That's like this classic Pleasure Beach. I love all this kind of stuff. Random props. It's got nothing to do with the theme or anything, but it's here and it adds to it. I love it. Do we know what this is from? No. So this came from Southport. Ah, um, Pleasure Land. Southport had a ride like the River Caves, although ah. it, their version didn't have a drop, but there was a difference in elevation between where the loading point and the unloading point. Um, and then they had the lift, a short lift between the, the two, which we didn't want people to ride on. Um, and so you needed to get off at the um, the unload point to make you get off. This was over oh, that wow. little conveyor belt, so that you had to get out the boat and you couldn't re ride. So <laughs> that's but, fascinating. Said, we don't throw things away. So I uh, thought I recognised him somewhere, but you, it's hard, isn't it, when you see so many different props? Oh, look at that piece of history there. Oh, that's great. From Southport Pleasureland. I've had a photo of the snake. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's going down as well. This is going to be really nice up here. Oh, look at this fantastic view of Icon. This is the break run just here. And of course the junior hill in there too, which comes after the second launch on the ride. We're in the um, the, the motor house um, for the lift. Although the ride has got two lifts or seemingly two lifts, they're actually operating off the same chain um, and they're in line with each other on the same system. Um, and this motor has been here for about 40 years. Uh -huh. um, so if it ever broke, it would be a problem for us, but we do have a spare oh. and we have a little plan in place. But I'll tell you about that in a second. You've got the main motor, I think it's about 80 horsepower. Um, and then you've got the drive section there. You've got a coupling section and then it goes through the wall there to a sprocket, which is what connects with the chain um, to help drive it. Um, you'll see that this structure is similar to what we saw around the corner. Um, and we've got a fake wall um, at the end um, of this building. Um, so if we ever needed to get this out, you can see there's a little trolley under here, which you'll see when we go outside in a second. We could pick this up, take it through there by just simply taking that wall down for mm. like half an hour. And if you come through here, you can see that we've uh, put in place um, then um, that would be the ride gone for the rest of the season. Mm. But doing things like this and planning for those things, yeah. it means that if that worst case was to happen, we've got something in place that means we can actually, you know, replace a piece of kit that's been there for 40 years. So this is about sort of forward thinking and using what, yeah. what we've actually got. Yeah, this has only recently been done, hasn't yeah, it, as so well? in the last year we've kind of yeah. figured, you know, we don't want to, to lose the ride for mm. a long period of time. So we're putting in place things um, to, you know, plan if that did actually happen, what we, what we would do. When we're in an awkward location here, it's quite difficult to get things like mm. cranes and so on Somewhere in because, um, yeah, because mm. we're yeah. obviously surrounded. This is cool over here behind me. We've got a little funnel, a little thing mm. full of oil in there. What, oh, what yeah. would that be for? for? For the lift chain, is it? It is. Oh. And if you look on here, the other end of that, can you see those two little brushes? and then the little tubes coming off them. And in the olden days, you would sit there with a paintbrush and having to do it like this. <laughs> you can fill this up, run it for half an hour, leave it to its own devices, wow. and it'll, lift, it'll oil the whole chain for you. Oh, that's really it's going cool. through. So it's another little, and they didn't have that 100 years ago. No. <laughs> They've obviously got it oh, now. I love that. All right, well, we're going to cut that the way we came. And back up onto the structure now. Look at this. First part of the lift hill. So this is... Um, this is where you can see how when I said that we've got two lifts but they run off the same chain, you can see that they're in line with each other. And if you think a hundred years ago that someone's thought this out, um, I think they've done a really, really good job um, to yeah. do that. Oh, and then they it goes up through there. Yeah. yeah, you can see the return down there and it cuts through. There's that white box tube at the bottom, but you can see part of the chain above there. It always looks funny, that bit down there, where the chain feeds on, because you just kind of think, well, why is that not in line yeah. properly? And the reason for that is because the train doesn't actually connect with the um, chain until it's about six foot onto the chain, and um, so it's able to do that, and that's why it's in al alignment like that. Okay. Right, we're going to take a walk through the tunnel. <laughs> <coughs> More great views of Icon. <laughs> Fascinating stuff this. Like you realise just how wide the track is and stuff for example as well when you get close to it. Like look at this. Amazing. Quite a lot of TLC going on down here. You can see with the scaffolding for the repaint. Into the tunnel. That's right at the start of the ride. Even this is being painted which is good to see. Even though you can't really see it from off-ride it's all it's fantastic. 
doing all this work. Although they have painted the running rail, which isn't going to last very long when the train goes. <laughs> but you also, if you look behind, obviously you can see the, the classic sign from the 1960s. No, I love that. Where we're having to remind people not to smoke um, on a wooden coaster. At the moment, as it's being repainted. There we are, walking down the middle of the track. <laughs> What an experience. I am loving this. Just geeking out massively. <laughs> it was such a piece of history. Yeah, lots of work going on around here. Lots of TLC. So we, as we came out there, it's actually a little what's called a broom room around the corner. It's like the side of the cupboard. Um, and they, they used to access it by going over there, jumping down onto the track and going in. I mean, it wouldn't be allowed by today's standards, but um, there are lots of like the hidden bits like that. I'm stood at the moment. Um, on the load um, section of the ride. So remember when we were talking about the block section and so on, you've got load here, obviously unload um, down there and the train is moved through by the person in the brake box. We're gonna go and have a look at the brake box uh, from the outside now, but it's a big step up um, onto the platform. Mm -hmm. Big step. <laughs> in the station makes me look forward to riding it again this summer oh this has been painted as well first close-up look at this all the work they've done looks great wow what an evening for it look at the sky the sun going down this is the brake box of the ride where someone stood. They helped out though because when the train comes into the return bend, an alarm goes off in here and a flashing light which is telling the person that our train is coming in, you need to do something. <laughs> you can see these, the end of the brakes there, but up in there they go to the different handles. There's the yellow one, the blue one and the white one, which is how they're moving them through. But there's also a fourth brake down there behind uh, Luke, that red pole sticking up there, which is the check brake and that's set each morning by the engineers, partly depending on what the weather's like. That takes the oomph out of the train first, um, and then it is the person here in that box who's bringing the train uh, to a stop, unloading it and moving it through the station. We're gonna walk up the first drop, all right? <laughs> hey. So it's quite steep, you need to treat it like a ladder, um, using the little rungs yeah. um, as we go up, but it's also <laughs> a nice way to get to the top. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be fun, you ready for this, Charlotte? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I think we're going to be treated by a fantastic sunset from here. Oh, it's steep. <laughs> it's steep. Just to reconnect on again. And here we go, all clicked on again. And it's time to climb up the first drop on the Big Dipper. Wow. And this is pretty steep. <laughs> literally you could treat this like a ladder when you're climbing up how are you getting on there charlotte <laughs> luckily you've got the wooden beam here on the right to hold on to to help you out oh and look at that sky this is perfect for tonight wow Where it gets really quite steep now. If you're scared of heights, this bit's where it's probably not for you. Oh my god, wow. This is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Perfect timing. The sun going down here in Blackpool. And yeah, there's a look at the first drop. We've just climbed up. Wow, top of the second lift hill, just there. Fascinating fact as well that Andy told us, of course, I mean about the, the chain and used for both of the lift hills built on top of each other. I mean, it's really interesting stuff. And there's an amazing view looking over the skyline of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. One of the best views in the park from up here at the top of Big Dipper. And you don't really get that long to appreciate it when you're on the ride. So it's really nice just to stand up here and look out and take it all in because that view is amazing. And yeah, just seeing all the red and white on here looks great, it really does. Icon off to the left, infusion to the right, and of course the big one over at the back there. And yeah, a really special photo op just here. 
100 years, established in 1923. This iconic Blackpool wooden roller coaster. And the timing for this, amazing. Beautiful, it's so calm tonight as well. Summer's finally coming. And what a night to be up here and appreciate this. We don't like it boxed in because the pigeons like it. <laughs> um, but the, um, the onion is over there in that white box there. You can see the top of it point, pointing out. It's gonna be repainted and then a crane takes it back on and puts it on the top there you um, go. of this structure here. And we're going to walk round now so you can get behind the sign. And um, because you're not connected, we're nowhere near the edge, but you must stay on the path with me. Yeah. All right, so follow me. There you go. Oh, thank you. What's that? Wow. Isn't that a great view down towards the other side of the park. That is stunning. The big letters just here that light up at night, which always look iconic. That is stunning, isn't it? It's just so calm tonight. No wind or anything. It's amazing. Blackpool Tower down there. So peaceful. And just being in Pleasure Beach when there's nobody else here other than us guys and security. It's just like a really special experience in itself. You get to here, guys. You do need to... Uh, Clipping back on. on just here. What a view. And yeah, you realise that how big this is all in just for the onion to sit on top mm. amazing top of the lift hill here then the wheel just there and the top of the lift chain what a view so special isn't it seeing this charlotte oh it is what a night for i'll never forget my 30th birthday climbing this piece of history and really unique doing it at this time as well with the onion not actually being on the top because let's face it when's the next time that's not going to be on there you know i could never remember it without it being on there so yeah it's a really unique time to be doing this and seeing it you see how the anti-roll back on the lift is the same style as the dog racks that you saw previously you also get to appreciate the nice bit of theming on the roof of icon station which you don't really see that much actually from down on the ground like the japanese kind of architecture on there so we climb down the lift hill that we'd normally climb up and i've got to hand it to infusion i might not like the ride but it does look very good from up here looks good off ride give me the classic woodies any day wow amazing from here look at that that's the thing when you're facing this way you're going up the lift hill you don't realize but look at that view of icon from here that's a big part of the experience from this not just walking the woody but also looking at the other rides and some unique perspectives and angles that you, you can see from on the ride when you're on it but not for long because obviously you're racing round you know it's so nice just to appreciate the other rides from from this angle yeah, we were saying just off camera some like chaser lights would be nice on here again like back in the day some like festoon lights on the lift hill would be really cool we make our way back down what an experience incredible and the perfect night for it as well and heading back now down to the station for the big dipper to end our walk the woody experience absolutely brilliant like just being up there with the sun going down as well made it extra special the weather's just perfect tonight like look at it shining through the coaster oh amazing beautiful absolutely beautiful shortcut through here again watch your head on this what an absolutely brilliant experience we're back here now over at skyforce and as you can see you can get some exclusive merchandise as well 34.95 for the walk the woody hoodie and just here you got 12.95 for the t-shirt just there not too badly priced at all and you've got a couple of other smaller bits just here too which is great Kira, 3.95 and they've also just given us a piece of wood haven't they as well which is really nice yeah what an amazing I birthday i loved it it was really good oh nice. amazing we'll do a bit of a summary when we get outside in just a moment but yeah absolutely awesome that was brilliant 
How amazing was that? I tell you what, I am never going to forget my 30th birthday, Charlotte. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you so much. And also, thank you to Andy and all the team at Blackpool Pleasure Beach for that. The extra special little gift was amazing, oh, too. Oh, that was so cute. Oh, honestly, thank you so much um, to the park for just holding these events because that is amazing. I love it's that so much. It's just a truly memorable experience that we will never forget. The whole team behind it did such a fantastic job. We would definitely recommend it. It costs £100 at the moment for that experience, and you're allowed to bring two spectators along as well and yeah with the spectators uh, there was actually one who was with us tonight and uh, yeah it was great his experience too wasn't it? I think it? the experience for him was really well it wasn't just a case of you can just sit at the side he was actually being taken along a designated route that didn't require the safety equipment I think that's really good that they do that. And what an experience for us actually walking around that attraction what really made it for me was Star Hill I didn't think we we're gonna be getting that so that was really cool. I just loved the whole experience. And along with that as well seeing up close and personal other rides especially how close we got to the big one especially to the new sections of track uh, icon our favorite coaster in the uk to get that close to it and really appreciate the section more that you can't really see that much off ride and that's down underneath steeplechase isn't you it you just don't realize we've got some fantastic photos like the s-pen down there incredible we'll share a lot of photos on social media as well so stay tuned and give us a follow on instagram facebook uh, twitter we're there as theme park worldwide uh, but now uh, what an amazing experience and of course the highlight being of course climbing up the first drop like that Ooh, was incredible it was quite challenging to be honest getting up there but once we got up there it was so worth it for the view it was and that blackpool sky tonight delivered for my 30th oh, birthday it, did, didn't it wasn't just a cloudy night at the seaside the weather was perfect and they timed it so well for us getting up there the sun was literally just starting to go down and that was really special for me on my birthday as well i mean anybody doing that anytime that would be special but for me turning 30 seeing walking a, a 100 year old coaster seeing the sunset like that um is one of my favorite parts of, of, oh, of life so what I've ever done. Like, these parks really do mean the world to me and going on something like that uh, really makes you appreciate how much work goes into keeping these classics al alive. That's what makes Blackpool Pleasure Beach and as much as we love Icon, Valhalla and the newer parts it's still the, the retro classic rides what make a park like that and the fact that someone has to walk them rides every single morning. I can't morning, believe that like credits where credits due for them walking those every day. It's, it's a big job it really is but uh, we would 100% recommend the experience 100 pounds per person person for that and I think it's well worth yeah it. definitely the whole thing was around two hours including the briefing um, getting there and of course kind of taking all the equipment off at the end um, you can take as many pictures and videos as you want as well obviously they do recommend wearing a chest harness if you've got so a GoPro nice so it's secure and you can focus where you walk in and holding on and that sort of thing um, but yeah that was absolutely amazing and of course an extra special thank you to the park as well um, for that little gift as well oh, which is really was nice lovely, of them wasn't yeah it? I wasn't expecting that like a little cookie and then also as well in the in the bag um, they gave me like a little fun Oh, on, a, on was, a plaque. It's like a little mini canvas which was lovely. Yeah, that's really kind of them. You can see them just there on your screen. But no, that was really nice of them. So thank you to the park for making my birthday extra special. Oh. And we're going to be back in July to do Walk the Big One XL. Oh, I'm so excited for that because I've never even walked the big one so I can't wait to do that. Yeah, it's been 10 years since I did it. We climb up there and of course we climb up to another section to get some views. It's going to be awesome and that's coming up in July. But from Blackpool Pleasure Beach that leaves us with one final thing to say. Get, get out, out there, there and keep, keep on, on riding. riding. We'll see you in the next vlog.